Good evening, welcome to the stream this evening and I shall uh, be carrying on with the, uh, the steam train here doing the um, doing the body and then the tender and I must remember to do a wheel down here For the moment we'll just continue with this part of the body here and camera's shifted a little bit so we'll just move that more like that actually i'm wondering if it might be better to actually move the camera so excuse me this is possibly going to um, be a little bit awkward once I just feed this camera around a light. That's probably going to go all sorts of directions. So excuse me whilst I just sort it out. Let's do um, that. It back a little bit. Just thinking the way in which I normally hold this um, work like that may well be better to have the camera that way. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip the camera as well, providing I can work out the right way to do it. Properties, there we go. And I thought, oh, there we go. That's it. Flip it vertically. There we go. Hopefully, that will be better like that. See we doubt and we might get a bit better lighting on it as well. There we go. Let's see how that goes. Good evening, Fear Reaper. Welcome to the studio this evening. Just messing about with the um, camera again. I mess about with this camera. He's never this one. This little Microsoft camera. Don't really like its mounting, but there's nothing I can do about it. So how are you this evening? It's um, for some reason it's taken a <laughs> this evening has suddenly taken a really bad sort of turn. Ah oh dear. Um, late start, late tea, and uh, my microphone decided it wasn't going to work, so I had to unplug and replug that. Then I wanted the camera in a different position. And one or two other things going on, and uh, it just seems to be a really bad day today. So I'm hoping the rest of the stream goes okay. You're doing pretty good. I'm glad. Glad someone is. Uh, dear, how is your um, papercraft going with the uh, with that car? Mm -hmm. You managed to find yourself uh, some sharp knives, or are you uh, persevering with the uh, with the scissors? Busy work day at work today, so I've actually yeah, been in an office today rather than at home. So I was up early this morning and uh, relatively late home, and then uh, rushing to do lots of things. Still, hopefully, as I get into doing this, I'll feel a bit calmer and more relaxed and. Uh, 
it'll be quite a fun stream this evening. Yeah, that reminds me. I was going to start a Windows 10 update on this machine to the left of me, but I'll wait until after the stream now to do that. <laughs> uh, oh, I didn't actually. Well, I watched. I had him on yesterday, but I had the sound turned down. I was watching something else, and. Uh, um, I had about three things going on at the same time, so basically, whilst I had this stream running, I didn't actually get to uh, to hear him. But yeah, it can well be um, uh, really quite funny. He was doing the uh, rat pack, I believe, last night, wasn't he? Um, I sort of was um, was otherwise occupied, shall we say, trying to do uh, two two or three other things. I'm still trying to get my website up and. Uh, up and finished but um, I was, I was, uh, what's the word I was kind of playing with it last night uh, as opposed to actually doing something I wasn't actually making much progress I was kind of a bit too tired and I was kind of pottering around getting getting absolutely no way but not really trying too hard to do it um, but uh, yeah you're not having much <laughs> A look at you with the uh, with that so thick paper is too thick thin paper is too thin can you sort of stick two pieces of thin paper together and make it a little bit thicker yeah, he is indeed really good at painting he's not bad at airbrushing occasionally as well <laughs> But you probably want to see him do that if uh, last night was the first time you've uh, you've seen him on stream. Uh, earlier this week he was doing um, doing Horace, which is the the well it's a xenomorph, uh, of course, which is the the alien from the alien films, and uh, he's uh, he's been painting that one for a while. But uh, he's been painting it for long enough for it to acquire a name, which is where Horace comes from. I'm guessing he was, um, he was perhaps having a, a rant about something last night. So what was uh, what was last night's subject? Yeah, he did mention that. I think yesterday, didn't he? he was going wanting to do some paper craft. Uh, I know he was uh, mentioning he wants to do a life-size um, something from Star Wars, a life-sized um, robot of some kind. I forgot what it was now. Uh, some of the one of the I think one of the war droids of some kind. Um, no, it's gone. But Pel oh, ranting about the bustles. <laughs> It had to be something. That's something I've got to uh, start and look at. It's postal charges of things. And uh, try and work out what on earth are, you know, what the different charges are for different things. Hmm. Ranting about the postal service didn't quite go postal then. <laughs> I think that must be. Uh, I'm, I'm fairly well. I, I keep hearing that, and the only going postal I know of is Terry Pratchett and um, Discworld. But I've got a feeling it come, the the quote comes from a film. Mind you, the film might well be Terry Pratchett's Discworld. Thinking about it. <laughs> Well, I'm glad he's getting back into uh, into streaming again. Hmm. 
I'm going to try and find a way of holding this hoop such that um, I'm not bending my wrist at a really awkward angle, which is what uh, what I was just doing. What I need to ideally need to do is to support the underneath uh, the the material as I punch through. That way, it's it's easier to work a lot faster, and it's it actually is a lot. I'll say cleaner, but what I mean is um, I can be more consistent with spacing and things like that. But um, it can be quite awkward to hold uh, the material. You're sliding your hand around in underneath, and um, it tends to move around. And I was ending up holding my wrist at a really awkward angle. It's not going too bad. <laughs> Time to try out in the paper. Well. If it doesn't work, it can always be a uh, flat packed car, or um, you could um, assume that somebody dropped a, a tanker on top of it or something like that. <laughs> uh, and that way, it would still, uh, yeah, still be a viable model. Um, You could always, um, if it's sort of okay, but not quite okay, what you could always do is try doing something like um, PVA glue, just cutting the back of it, the uh, back of the paper, and letting it uh, set. So not glue it to anything, but just cut the back, and see if that stiffens uh, stiffens the paper up a little bit. Yeah, because you want something that you can actually pick up the model, don't you? Because that's it, well, for style, that's what people will do. So you don't really want to be sort of being very ginger about having to um, to pick it up and move it around. It's kind of not much fun that way. And I was kind of thinking about whether you could do something like a spray-on varnish or something on the paper as well. Um, you'd probably want to do that over the front, where the you know the printing is to stop it being um, any water or anything affecting the uh, affecting the printing. Because if you've done it on a normal dot matrix printer, the ink will will run if you do that. So, but uh, something like a uh, a spray on varnish or something over the front again that might stiffen up the paper enough to uh, uh, for it to be thin, but still quite quite stiff.
uh, bullet boost thing for the guy who's like, yeah. Well, I know of a glass blower. Well, that's really going to be the trick, isn't it? Finding the right, um, the right thickness of material for the uh, for the size of the model that you're doing, or at least the size of the maximum span, I guess, of um, of paper, um, so that it's, it will support itself when it's used in the model, but it's small, you know, it's thin enough to be. Um, I'm kind of wanting to say flexed, but I I mean um, you know put together and molded or whatever um, you need to do to get it uh, into the shape that you need. Andrew, you know what will happen, don't you, if you did get a, and I know what you mean by a bulletproof housing, what will happen is uh, nobody will get through the housing, but the model will come loose inside and, and squash itself against one of the faces. <laughs> you know, Murphy, Murphy will get involved in this. Murphy always gets involved in these things. To the back, yeah, yeah, but remember, um, things still have mass in a vacuum, uh, and then there's no air resistance to slow it down before it smacks into the end into the edge of the glass. <laughs> And of course, one of the um, one of the previous uh, ways in which a vacuum could be obtained within a, a vessel like that was like they used to do on the um, the old valves, which is use um, a substance which they called uh, 
Well, in valves, they call it a getter. But what it does is you basically ignite it and it burns up all the oxygen that's producing a vacuum. Um, if you ended up doing it like that, you'd probably set fire to the model. <laughs> it would go out really quickly, but... I just think you'd be you'd be able you'd be able to create um, a vacuum seal and a um, an authentic accident scene all in the same go. Well, for the past couple of days, I've couple about three days now. I've been playing um, Factorio. I don't know if anybody um, has had a go at playing that. It's, it's proved me an interesting game. It kind of tickles my um, creative nature, shall we say? Very much like um, Minecraft does, because you get to build stuff. But you, you've got an objective, and you, you know, you get to build stuff. But you get to build it your own way, in your own time, using however you want to do it, type of uh, type of thing. And uh, it's proving an interesting game to play. Whether I'm any good at it, I don't know. But um, one thing I am, I am finding with that game, where it's about, I don't know if you, if anybody knows what it's about, but it's kind of a you've got dropped on an alien planet and you've got no way off and well so i think the story is that you you're there to prepare for colonists yeah and um you've got to you know you start with you start with a, a pick or not even that you start with sticks i guess and and a bit of stone or something and uh You've got to build all the technology all the way up to i think the end game is supposed to be you build a rocket defense isn't it and uh, and, and that's maybe when it finishes i don't know but um and i i've um, been having fun building uh, building in there and uh, i've taken up all this you know you've got transport belts and factories and uh, furnaces and these sort of robot arms all over the place and because um, you because you, 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 you kind of start haphazardly or oh, I do because I've this is the first time I've played it and now it's kind of like I haven't got any more space and there's belts going in sort of loops and under other belts and <laughs> things like that just to, there's no real organization in it as such but then, then it becomes a case to sort of expand. You need to sort of organise, and I'm kind of really reluctant to break it down to build it up again, which is about the only way you can you can do it, I guess. And at the moment, I'm I aren't run, I'm not running out of iron, but there's no more iron around where I am, and I'm I've already had a walk around, shall we say, trying to find some. And uh, after about ten minutes of walking, I still haven't found any, so. I don't even know, quite don't quite know how much, how long this playthrough is going to go on because um, if I run out of iron, then you're kind of stuck. But it's a really interesting game. The way they've got that, um, there's an objective, and but really, and in sort of the and progression in it with the research and things, but it's. It's such an open-ended game along the lines of, you know, if you don't want to do the research, you don't have to do the research sort of thing. Well, you need to progress, but 
you don't have to do you know, uh, combat or anything you can leave that or do it at some other point or logistics or electricity or things like that it's um, it's, it's quite um, quite interesting how they've managed to encapsulate that um, free formness the once it get call these days sandbox you can do it any way that you like um, as long as you do it type of thing I only relatively recently discovered it watching uh, watching a couple of YouTubers play the game and uh, it, it sort of just really looked interesting to try and I'm kind of glad I did trouble is now I, it's kind of um, I don't really want to put the game down if you know what I mean I always keep wanting to do just that a little bit more. I'll just rearrange something just before you. Know, it's bedtime, but I'm just going to rearrange where this furnace output, and then you sort of rearrange half a dozen belts, and you then need to, you know, craft some more. So you have to move, you know, you have to move something around to get to something else, and you run out of iron and or copper, and so sort of an hour after you intend it to go to bed, you're still there trying to um, to do the rearrangement whatever it was that you uh, you started in the first place um, I was watching actually um, I've been watching Marathi play it tonight I don't know if it's and that's a, um, a twitch player I don't know if you're familiar with but um, I enjoy watching him uh, play games and he's an insomniac so he tends to play for like 24 hours at a time uh, and it's been kind of interesting watching uh, watching him play it and I'm kind of the same as he is I'll sort of in, be doing something and something else will catch me eye as, as he puts it shinies and um, you completely forget what it was you were doing by the time you've you've gone and looked at whatever caught your eye and uh, it's what was I doing I was making something but no idea what it was Take it you've um, you've played the game quite a bit then, uh, Fear Reaper. I think we were discussing this the other night, weren't we? But like I'm going to run out of this blue thread before I finish this part of the body it's really amazing how much thread you go through I think there's something like about 30 meters on one of these reels and I've used uh, virtually all of it so far on this locomotive So did he? I was about. To, I was about to say, did he get a free game for doing that? But I guess to to have done the translations, he probably had to have got the game in the first place, um, so that they could. Um, he knew what to translate. <laughs> That's something's jammed up. What's jammed up? Yep, something jammed up there.
what was it I spent last night? I, I think I spent something like about 10 or 15 minutes last night trying to puzzle out why the, um, uh, why, why, uh, well, a refine, well, I was about to say why a refinery stopped, but I was puzzled, trying to puzzle out why a pumping jacket stopped. And, um, yeah, the refine. At first, I was looking at the refinery and thinking it's not giving any output to to, to generate plastics. And um, the ref, the refinery it stopped, and I couldn't work out why this had stopped. Then I realised that the pumping jacks had stopped, and and I couldn't work out why they stopped. Because if you broke it and picked it up and put it back down, it'd start up but then stop. And um, sort of similarly with the. Um, with the refinery and in fact all of it it was kind of I can't work out what's going on with this it took um hello 3d block you're here but not if that makes sense it makes perfect sense which probably means that I must be going mad um oh he did get a free copy oh, that's uh that's nice of him anyway um don't know if you've played it uh, 3d block kind of strikes me something that you might enjoy Factorio um, and it took me about 15 minutes before I realized that because um, I was fairly early on if you like just having got the um, oil processing research that um, I, I, I realized that the tanks that I was feeding the heavy and light oil into you know as by put the byproduct stuff were full <laughs> no way to put anything so it's kind of like all right well i need to do some research to get the the ability to crack those down into the sort of the petroleum gas which obviously as you know you use for the um uh, for the uh, plastics and how can i do this if i can't get any plastic out of it to, and to make the i think it makes sci the, the science three packs and um the blue ones and eventually I just to build an extra two tanks and just drop them down just to put stuff in whilst I I built you know could research the additional processing and then build the um, the extra stuff on there which reminds me I should check to see whether it's actually emptying those tanks or not otherwise I'm going to be in trouble again And you having said that, you know, maybe we ought to. Um, yeah, me asking there, 3D block if he if he tried uh, Factoria. Perhaps that's not a good idea because together with that and Kerbal, probably means he won't stream painting anymore. <laughs> He'd be too busy playing either game. So maybe I should be selfish and not mention it uh, when he's around. This year, um, you're probably listening 3D block. Uh, we had Fear Reaper on earlier saying how much um, he enjoyed your stream last night for for the first time of having seen it. Whilst I was watching you last night, I wasn't listening, so I had the sound turned down. So uh, I gather you um, you had a very uh, interesting stream. Because now I'm wondering just how um, long it is before 3D can uh, can resist coming back and, and saying something.
<laughs> Not very long then, I guess, is the answer to that one. Oh dear. Oh, I understood from uh, Fear Reaper that you you had uh, an interesting rant about the post office uh, last night, but it does seem to be pretty quiet at the moment, does, uh, does Twitch. Don't quite know. Well, it's just one of those phases that it's going through, I guess. But it does uh, seem to be quite uh, interesting how some weeks are really busy and some weeks are really quiet. where I start placing little bets with myself as to whether or not I'm going to end up having to get another reel of uh, well I know I'm going to have to get another reel out to, of this blue to finish the uh, the, the piece but uh, as to whether I've got enough to actually finish this section of the locomotive anybody feels like um, having a pretend bet go ahead as to whether or not you think there will be enough I literally don't know. I sometimes surprise myself both ways. <laughs> Maybe they thought there was a vampire in the package or something, 3D bloke. I mean, that must be it's about the only explanation I can think of as a, a stake through, um, through somebody's heart. I've not actually had to send... Um, send anything at all out work wise through the uh, through the post yet I suspect uh, well it would be he kind of in a way it would be nice to start having to send some stuff through the post you think I'll make it you could be right I, I, I I've at times I've looked at things and been surprised at how much I've got left and at other times um, I thought I've got loads and it's uh, and it's run out really quickly but uh, I'm kind of not a not a betting person though I once spent three three or four days in Las Vegas and never spent a penny uh, on any gambling at all Not in the slot machines, not on any of the tables or any of the games. Uh, I mean, we spent some money going to like shows and stuff, but um, not any of the gambling. I'm quite happy to watch other people lose their money rather than myself. Oh, 
Well, I did play some of the games virtually, if you know what I mean. So you sort of say, you know, especially with some of the, um, like the lottery type stuff, or or even just sort of like um, the roulette, you know, sort of in your mind place a virtual bet on something and just see whether whether you'd have won or not. Uh. Oh, you did you get a did you start doing a ra some rage painting last night then a three D block, you know, throwing throwing paint at the canvas. I'm looking at this um, theory, but I don't think we're going to have enough to finish. But uh, we shall see. I think my guess is I'm not, um, but uh, that is purely, purely a guess. <laughs> oh, I know that sort of thing. I've done it with all sorts of well, all sorts of stuff. Um, not not um, not canvases because I've never painted a canvas in my life. But um, you know, doing uh, picking up things like models and painting or stuff like that, and you know. You, you have a paintbrush full of paint and it's not like a delicate dab it's always goes in the worst place going or oh, I've had the paintbrush in my mouth is usually the one and I'm not watching what I'm doing well that's kind of one way of uh, challenging yourself to get it finished fairly quickly I guess 3D block Good, I'm uh, uh, pleased, uh, comp that you um, you find it good for something and it's peaceful, which is very nice to know. I mean, after all, um, uh, that peaceful is a is a really uh, really useful thing, nice and relaxing. If you like, I can make my voice somewhat softer and uh, more relaxed and almost with a yawn in it, which might make you go to sleep even more. And of course, if you are going to go to sleep, uh, comp, make sure when you... Um, he knows it's the keyboard, it clicks the follow button just as you're doing it. <laughs> Might as well get some advantage out of it. Um, mm. 
I'm not quite sure why you <laughs> why you like it as well, but I do actually like it. It is kind of a nice. Um, it it's close to sort of the pure blue, I guess. Um, there are certain colours that I really like, and uh, I know this isn't. It, the camera isn't going to show this, but I've got I've got some purple rings here. These are going to show up blue. But they're a really rich purple, and, and, and I just love that colour. Unfortunately, the camera doesn't show it, but um, blue is one of my favourite. Uh, I'm one of my favourite colours. I kind of, um, I kind of like the primaries, to be honest. Although, I, I, I suppose I'm a sucker for saturated colours um, more than anything. But um, sort of the six primaries. Uh, I kind of enjoy. <laughs> and of course at this point we've got some people wondering what I'm talking about with six primary colours. It's getting close, uh, Fear Reaper, but um, getting close. My um, my Yorkshire heart wishes or hopes that you're right. By the way, uh, you're right. It is uh, Eddie Fall guy. Um, actually, it's probably a bit. It's probably a bit more. It, it's like that, but it it it, it certainly is rich as that sort of colour. But it, I think it's probably. I was gonna say a bit more purpley, but it's it's more towards the slightly darker, slightly darker shade. It's a, it's a, it's a real. I, I kind of wish. Uh, I've got some others which, unfortunately, aren't quite that. Uh, they're still. They're meant to be the same colour in quotes, purple, but the um, it's not quite the same richness, which is a pity because it's a beautiful colour. It's one of the, actually the reasons why I kind of like these rings because of the the lovely sort of rich colours that um, you get with them. Uh, you know, no matter what the the colours are. They're a, they're a lovely, in most cases, really nice, saturated, um, shiny colour. Shinies. Lots of shinies. Did you manage to get your... Um... <laughs> I'm going to call them off-road wheels. Um... Uh, done successfully last night, Eddie Fall Guy, because I can't remember the name of them. Okay, well the threads disappeared down into the uh, needle barrel now, so I don't think we're going to manage uh, to complete with the thread. But, uh, so oh, we're out. There we go. We've gone. We've finished. So I shall now need to thread some more in order to finish it off. Make sure I get the. I say make sure I get the right one. So I actually have numbered these. So that's thirty-two. So is that that's the right one. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, yeah, well, somewhere around here, I was about to say, somewhere around here, I've got a Pantone colour chart. Uh, but it's somewhere around here and I have absolutely no idea where it is. I got given it, which is um, amazing given the fact that they cost a heck of a lot of money to the Pantone charts. Just don't really have a use for that much. I don't go, um, don't go try and do colour matching to that level. Yeah, I don't have any. I don't. I don't have a color calibrated scanner either, so I can't scan them. Mind you, I don't have a. Oh, I do have a scanner, but um, the scanner I've got, um, for some reason, doesn't have. Well, not for some reason. <laughs> for a very obvious reason, doesn't have Windows eight, uh, Windows seven drivers. The very obvious reason is the manufacturer wanted you to buy a new scanner, so they didn't build the drivers. Canon, um, nothing wrong with it, and I, I kind of, um, kind of hate having to buy, like a new scanner, you know, for no other reason than the manufacturer um, doesn't want to support their older products, which are no different to their newer products. Um, Bit like sort of uh, Apple type things, you know. It's um, it reads the device ID and goes, nope. Exactly the same interface, but just reads the device ID and goes, nope. I'm not going to talk to that one. And then, yeah, you'll get somebody who, uh, who sort of hacks it on the internet and just uh, changes the, the the code, you know, a couple of bytes of code, and all of a sudden it reads okay, but. Uh, thank you very much for that, Fuffy Twiggler. Oh, I see. <laughs> well, that's um, that's what definitely a good way of finding out uh, what the colour is. Um, yeah, I've been there. I've been there. What? Well, I say Cadbury's World. I don't know whether it's Cadbury World. Uh, World. I've been to a Cadbury's Chocolate Factory once. Um, I don't really remember it. Um, that was quite a, well. It's quite a few years ago, and uh, I've all I have actually I've been to two sweet factories in my life. One was something like Cadbury's World, somewhere near Birmingham, isn't it? I think. Um, I seem to think it's somewhere down there, and uh, the other one was um, at Pontefract, where the the factory that used to make Pontefract cakes, the licorice things. And uh, that was an interesting uh, place to go. Yeah, so that's the one I went to. And um, you, you went in things like the sugar mixing room, and, and as you were breathing, you could actually taste the sugar in the air, the sugar dust. Um, I'm guessing it probably wasn't really a very health, healthy place to be if you're breathing in dust like that for, for very long. Um, and of course you got the um, what was you, back then you got to go to the tasting room where basically you could have as much to eat as you liked and um, I gather most tours that went round it um, that's precisely what people did they almost ate themselves sick and then you get the uh, the workers who there that basically don't eat any of it at all even though they can do just because they've <laughs> they've had it so much that they're no longer interested in um, uh, chocolate or sweets at all yeah that's right uh, 3d block i mean and and, and this canon light 50 and if you change the 50 to an 80 in in the driver software and literally just like one byte change it would work so obviously it wasn't um uh wasn't anything that uh, it was inherent in the machine itself they just decided you know what we're gonna not let you, dr you run this driver against that particular machine so as it stands at the moment i've not bothered um 
replacing I kind of could do with it really from the point of view of things you know useful useful things I want to scan like CD covers um, and I know that's breaking copyright um, but just to put it again you know when you've scanned music which is also breaking copyright now um, that um, that sort of sm small use and it's kind of a pain in the neck it doesn't work I thought that it stuck paper's too thin you're not having much luck with that particular model are you fear reaper I'd kind of love to get something like an A2 scanner, just, I was about to say for scanning artwork, but in actual fact, just about any artwork that I do would be electronic of that size anyway. And I can just print out another copy. <laughs> so, you know, not quite sure why I was thinking I could do with an A2 scanner. Mind you, there again, these days, cameras, uh, providing you can get it, um, well, even maybe, I was going to say, providing you can get a, a good straight shot. But there again, with something like Photoshop, you don't necessarily need to be too accurate with it these days. You almost don't need a scanner these days, you just photograph it and, um, and then adjust it afterwards. So, that's some part, I was about to say it, most of the main body, not quite. Because I've got the, uh, I've got the cab to do, but uh, let's have a look. Uh, oh, that's that, um, that's that thread that we ran out on, on that side, so let's just get rid of that. I'll turn it around so that's what it looks like at the moment now this white looks a little odd I'm hoping that that's going to look a lot better when I actually put some of the sky in um, <laughs> all of that I'm going to say the problem with some of the those um, old cameras like older cameras like that is the raw format was always sort of fairly proprietary um, and then, um, but these days, of course, they just load up as a USB drive, so it's not too bad. Yeah, actually, of course, you're saying that you'd like an A0 plot, plot, uh, a plotter. Oh, a plotter. I was going to say a scanner, then I suddenly thought it makes sense to have an A0 scanner because of the size of the um, canvases you do. And then I thought, that's why I wanted an A2, because uh, I tend to for airbrushing I tend to use A3 um, but A2 would be kind of kind of nice and to sort of scan an airbrushed picture um, but uh, a plotter why a, why a plotter um, 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 yeah. I'm just wondering why a plotter I mean they are fun I used to, I used to have an, an A3 plotter in fact I still do but it's um, it's got a parallel interface on it and I uh, think that nowhere on earth is there going to be any drivers available for it these days but it was always uh, always fun driving a plotter I got it originally to do PCB um, plots then never did um, I 
Yeah, just remap the keyboard. Just trying to think then, there's not there's not many uh, control key combinations that I use on the keyboard apart of the, 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 the three cut, copy and paste. They're about, about the only ones. Um, although I guess you, yeah, that's the equivalent of the Windows key, isn't it, these days on the, on the Mac? It's uh, the Apple key was the... Uh, was was effectively the Windows key. Yeah, just remap the keyboard. What's the um... Oh yeah, I see what you mean. I've got well, it, it's not that big, but I've got uh, Craftec Robo up here, the slightly older one, so it's got it doesn't have the adjustable knife on it, but um Uh, I mean that 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 cuts a for weight, the length. Yeah. If you go a for landscape, so talked about an eleven and a half or something, um, it'll it it cuts that width, but um, basically as long as you want. Of course, that width is a three, isn't it? So a three short distance, uh, for about uh, two or three meters, I think it can cut. <laughs> yeah, I didn't have any problem with uh, with with. It's supposed to be an A4, but it, it as I say because you can put an A4 through landscape mode, it would do. It, but it, it um, you can you can basically go as long as you like. Um, last time I used it, I cut out um, a very fine Greek key design. In fact. I actually, I actually cut. Last thing I cut was was a stencil to do that, to do the Greek key on the bottom of there. Now the interesting thing about that wasn't um, wasn't cutting the stencil; it was transferring it. <laughs> that was a real pain in the neck uh, doing the transfer for that. And I've just seen that. Um, I obviously wasn't quite as successful in doing the transfer because there's a, there's a, at least one break in there, but that was uh, that was this was uh, airbrushed. Oh, it's got a bit scratched as well. Yeah, something, something on it, but uh, that was um, some killer whales basically. I might as well just tip it up a little bit. So this was just. Um, an old, uh, what was it? It probably were, you know, like the um, cheese footballs and things, just one of those cases, uh, uh, cans, just sprayed. Let me put that back before. I lose it. Right, we'll do the back of the cab here and into the tender. Um, I may do white around the top of the uh, tender, uh, around the top of the cab and the tender as well. I think, otherwise it might look a little bit odd. So we'll just do this bottom end of the the cab. Um, And just catch it up to up to the same roughly the same place here with it being straight sided as well it's uh, the cab top is curved but the cab of course is straight sided whereas this is curved so the, the sort of the white reflections will come quite a bit lower on the curved body Uh, yeah, I've seen a couple of um, people do odd things like that. I think I saw somebody the other night using it like a, a spray, uh, not the other night, probably about a week or so, using it to spray like a plastic model, but actually just using it um, like you might use a spray can. So 
uh, sort of flat out <laughs> flat out spraying and uh, yeah, no particular um, finesse in it but uh, um, and I think I probably know uh, well not know which one you mean but I think I've seen uh, one of them as you say um, using them in the same way a paintbrush to car it's kind of kind of, I did once paint a car with a paintbrush it wasn't quite very good but <laughs> um, because of course you had all the uh, the bush marks in it Yeah, I keep we need to have a play about with vinyl, not 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 stencils, but uh, just just vinyl with the uh, with the with the the cutter. You know, making making signs like no junk mail, uh, you know, junk mail is not welcome. That sort of thing for the front door. Not that it'll make a blind bit of difference, but. I might have fun with a bit of vinyl. Most of the stenciling I do though is, um, well, when I use stencils, I'm not using stencils as stencils, I'm using them as um, spray guards really. So, um, yeah, well, things like on that can with the um, uh, with the killer whales, you know, just laying. Um, oh, I forgot what the name of the stuff is, but it's effectively just a, a thin vinyl, sticky vinyl, uh, of the top, and then sort of cut, cutting out where you want to spray so that you leave the background um, protected. Something mask. Something mask. Can't remember the name of it that I'm using. Um, or you, uh, you you put it over the top of artwork you've already done while you paint the background, that sort of thing. And of course that's all then cut out, uh, cut out by hand with um, uh, a scalpel, a, a brand new scalpel usually. Just so that it's extremely sharp and you don't end up cutting into your um, artwork. Um. Ooh. Designs on uh, automobile uh, airbrushing, eh? That's either either very lucrative or very um, loss making. Is <laughs> about the other way I can think of it. It seems it seems to be people who are either very successful at doing uh, auto um, airbrushing or or they just don't get you know don't get any business out of it at all. Uh, I couldn't really do that, uh, AD, because that sort of thing you probably want a mylar stencil um, rather than than a vinyl stencil. Um, so something fairly something fairly thick. Uh, just trying to think if I've got anything that would. So I'd be, I'd be, I'd actually um, suggest cutting out with a hot knife, to be honest, um, for something like that, because the vinyl stencils, they're, they're really, uh, they're sort of really floppy, shall we say? The sort of stuff that the craft robot will cut is is sort of thin, well, thinner than thin card, 
otherwise it's it's not a very gut cutter at all um but uh, something like um i'm trying to trying to think of actually where's my standard stencil um stencil thing uh, i've lost the shields i'm saying stencils but i'm thinking shields that they use for spraying i can't find it at the moment but they're um they're about a millimeter or so thick so they're self-supporting basically something you probably better with something like that so it's you know like a mile i say like a mile sheet and then uh, and then cutting with cutting that it out of that uh that way um you probably be able to do all of them Hmm. Yeah. Just looking at this um, this engine when it when it first went on this uh, bit of material, it didn't half look odd just because of the foreshortening effect that's on here and the um, and of course the perspective. It kind of looks weird. It kind of because uh, the the tender is is a it's quite a substantial vehicle, um, and yet it looks it looks quite tiny. You know, literally, it's it's sort of only about an inch an inch long compared with the rest of this locomotive, and uh, that's one of the uh, really weird things that uh, you kind of have to get used to in uh, in doing any form of artwork is that um, this sort of angle can produce some really uh, really weird looking things until you get used to it it looks it looks right especially once you um, start to fill coloring um, in whatever art form it is or craft form but um, uh, for it, it's one area where beginners uh, struggle with um, with art is the uh, is the perspective on things like this because it just looks so unnatural until you've actually drawn it and sort of coloured it that um, uh, people have a tendency to draw what they think not what they see which of course is the uh, it's one of the mantras draw what you see not what you think and um, something like this uh, people tend to draw what they think and it doesn't look right I'll leave that bit at the top to do in white and I shall do some of this tender Oops, let's cut that thread off as well I really should put some lettering on this tender, but I'm not going to bother. Hmm. 
mainly because um, I can't be bothered. <laughs> but uh, but partly because it would it, at best it'd be a few loops of gold uh, because of the um, the aforementioned uh, perspective and uh, foreshortening. So. Yeah, one of these days, cutting a cutting, cutting a Myla shield is something I kind of want to have a go at. Um, I only have two, and I kind of bought those when I got the airbrush. Okay, uh, use them occasionally. Don't uh, don't use them very often, but uh, mind you, I don't airbrush very often at the moment. But when I when I was airbrushing, I yeah, uh, only use them occasionally. But I uh, kind of always. I always thought it would be really useful because you know, whenever you whenever you want when I've got the sort of stencil that's got a compound curve on it um, so it has sort of a continuously variable um, curve so you can always find a bit of it that matches the curve that you you're wanting to um, to use it for but I always thought it would be really useful to be able to cut a perfect curve for whatever shape and just use it like a Almost like a stencil, um, or um, or things like uh, cut myself a, like a fire stencil with with the shapes that you find in fi in in flames. One of the, I'm gonna say one of the tricks with. Uh, I don't know about cutting cutting. Um, Myla specifically, um, I've cut um, plastic before, thin uh, thing plastic cut plastic art type stuff. Is um, don't try and cut in one go. Um, I mean, if you can use a hot knife, then it will. Uh, you you probably can cut in one go. You just have to be careful of shrinkage when you um, use hot knives. But um, the trick I found was um, not to not to try and cut in one go, or certainly not even to try and cut in two goes. Is sort of put a reasonable amount of pressure on the blade, um, hold it at a low angle if you can. So not not vertically like I'm holding this but down like you'd hold sort of a dinner knife quite low and uh, and kind of do it like you're scoring it uh, and and cut multiple times and it cuts a lot cleaner or the plastic card cut a lot cleaner like that so I'm imagining um, cutting um, mylar would be would be somewhat similar Now, whilst I'm cutting this, a little. Uh, whilst I'm cutting, I'm not cutting anything. Ah, oh dear, that's me getting things uh, cut up. Oh, okay, I shall probably drop in uh, and and actually maybe even listen this time, 3D bloke, since uh, uh, I'm probably not going to try and do anything after after my stream. 
uh, tonight feeling a bit tired so I'm sure I'll carry on but good luck for the stream uh, what was I going to say oh yes there's sort of a bit of, <laughs> bit of general knowledge whilst I'm uh, uh, colouring in this tender for anybody that uh, actually sort of d uh, doesn't know what uh, what the purpose of a tender is especially on um, things like uh, steam locomotives is where you see them most often but they have been known to be uh, with uh, diesel engines and uh, uh, even um, with a gas turbine once um, it were the the ten tenders were there and what the tender is there for is to carry extra um, water and coal for the long journeys otherwise the engine wouldn't be able to carry uh, carry enough water in its uh, on in its own tank uh, to go very far at all and back in the day when these sorts of engines were quite um, common on the British Railways they used to be able to uh, refill the tenders actually on the move what they'd have is a trough of water uh, probably you know something like a quarter of a mile long in the middle of the track and as the um, locomotive uh, got over the top of the trough what they do is lower lower down a scoop underneath the underneath well I don't know if it was underneath the engine or underneath the tender to be honest I think it was underneath the engine and uh, the the f pure speed of the locomotive would cause the water to um, rush up the scoop and actually pour into the water tank and in doing so it would create one heck of a lot of uh, spray around the locomotive so it's quite a spectacular sight you can um, you can still see or see um, find on the internet images or even sort of uh, I'll say video of um, of engines doing just that I guess they've been scanned from uh, film media but that's catching again That's one uh, one way in which, because um, water was something they used obviously a lot of. Um, that's one way in which the locomotives could basically go non-stop for really long, um, uh, really long journeys. The smaller engines um, and sort of the workhorse engines, like local engines, would just sort of top up at uh, any convenient station they happen to stop at. And uh, just about well. Back then, of course, every station had its own water tower uh, in order to top up the locos. That sounds like 3D has actually just gone live. I thought somebody else has. <laughs> Actually thought, mind you, I was about to. I was about to say. Actually thought I'd finish this loco uh, tonight. The um, the bit that I'm doing, I've got all the background to do, so I'm not actually finished with the uh, the piece at all. But just the loco part of it. But uh, of course, I started the stream a little bit late tonight. Tea went on a little bit longer than I expected. Um, so I'm not quite uh, going to finish it tonight. Although you know what, 
I've got a bit of white to do and I've a bit of grey to do. I was thinking actually of just um, stopping round about now, but um, given that I've got such a small amount of white to do, a little tiny bit of grey to do, I'm going to do that before I stop. So we'll actually complete the engine itself. So I need to do, I need to put some white in and then I need to put a little bit of grey in. Interesting that um, 84 guy because I was um, I watched um, a behind the scenes video from Matt Pendleton uh, yesterday who was um, who mentioned the, the very same thing about um, uh, having if you had two cameras of the same type how um, in a lot of cases, the driver either the drivers couldn't tell them apart, and so you, you know, had a problem where you couldn't really control them independently. Um, but um, and so use different cameras, which is kind of what I'm doing here. But uh, if I've got, a, if I remember rightly, uh, Freeze Free D Block's got two 920s, and. Um, and I was about to say, yeah, see what happens as well, but I think he's got an, at least a 930 rather than a 920, and I don't know if that makes a difference. I kind of expect it to be the same driver, but... Um, you think that they'd, they'd be able to tell them, you know, tell them apart, you know, they've got different IDs and things like that, they're on, in different locations on the bus, so... Kind of surprised in a way that they uh, you you're not you're having a problem controlling the second one. Um, but good to know because I was uh, I'm kind of I was kind of saving up for another um, 920 to replace this um, Microsoft thing that's in front of me. So uh, maybe I don't want to do that. Maybe I'll want to get a different, uh, a different manufacturer's camera. So we'll stop that there. So that's one bit of white. Uh, okay. It's uh, yeah. So yeah, so it, uh, it just, uh, it's probably, well, it, quite possibly, it's just the Logitech um, software itself. Because I suspect all it's doing is, um, is just firing the, um, the configuration software. Let me see, does this have a, choose the camp, well, mind you, I probably won't be able to tell. With only having one camera, I'm just looking now at the um, the control, uh, the sort of the controls. That's good. That for some reason fired autofocus. So fired focus right over to the right hand side of the uh, uh, in macro mode, basically. Um, I can't see anywhere in the. Um, 
No, I wouldn't like to keep the changes. I'm just looking. Normally, you can often see in the. Um, it's done it again. In in software, you can you can sometimes see you know, where there might be an option to uh, to select multiple cameras uh, or multiple you know, iterations. But um, what's that button? I've just seen a little button on the interface that I hadn't noticed before and doesn't have anything on it but doesn't do anything just to the right of where it says controls there's a button on the right hand side of the uh, of the window I have no idea what it does If the two cameras are coexisting quite happily, I'd be surprised if there wasn't a way in the um, Logitech software to actually distinguish between which one you, uh, you've got control of. Okay, so that's the last of the white there. So I've got a little bit of um, probably light grey to do. No, we'll use dark grey just for uh, just for a wheel down here. So that's the dark grey. Two, three. So just so. Hello, Fear Reaper. Just got a little bit to do just down here. This is basically just the uh, the back edge of a wheel. Oops, I've just seen a little bit more of the uh, Okay, I'll do that as well. Just seen a little bit more of the locomotive that I missed. Just a 
tiny tiny little bit of blue so I'll put, <laughs> I'll put the light blue back in so the light blue needs even less than the uh, the grey that I've just done but it's missing so I need to put it in um, light blue just a little bit here where it attaches the buffer to the um, to the engine I missed missed putting that in while I had the uh, the blue in so we'll put that in oh dear what else fails wet the thread I just knew it was going to be awkward trying to get through there This is a, a real small amount, but And that's that. So I don't think I've missed anywhere else on the locomotive. I'm just looking, I can't see anything. So we shall turn it over. That's the locomotive complete. Get the material off of it. Hmm. Hmm. Angles look a little bit odd, but um, that's probably just the angle that the camera's at. Now yeah, it looks a bit better like that. To tip the camera up. You can almost read the writing as well. Um, so that's the look. The locomotive itself is complete there. Uh, the uh, the rails in the background is the uh, the next job to do so I think I'm probably going to do what I did with the uh, class 66 the other locomotive that I've done and that is put it in grass um, so green at the bottom uh, sky at the top blue sky hopefully I've got enough blue sky to do it with but um, what I am going to do with this is put some smoke in so I'll put some smoke in in here which will fill up some of the space and make it a bit easier on the on the sky blue that I've got to uh, uh, to use less of it, shall we say? I think on the other one I took I used about three reels in the end, uh, and I think I've got three reels, so hopefully hopefully I've got enough. But there we go. The mallard, I think that's uh, doesn't look too bad at all. Anyway, tell you what, since I've got the camera pointed this way, I'm going to do that and say, hello, got a big picture and a small picture just to confuse everybody or whatever. So I'll talk to this camera for a change. So thank you everybody for watching this evening. I've uh, finished for now, um, but uh, we'll carry on tomorrow. It's really weird. I normally talk to that one and now I'm talking to this one and I keep wanting to look in the other direction. Um, Finish for now. We'll carry on tomorrow, as I say, with the uh, with the background for the locomotive. So the usual advert comes now, which is, of course, if there's anybody that's watching that isn't following, I would appreciate you if you want it to do so. If you push that follow button, you'll find it below the stream window. Whilst you're down there, you'll also find the uh, Twitter details, and they'll be on the end plate again in a minute as well. Um, at Zavagan Art, of course. 
uh, if you'd like to follow me. I do tweet when the stream goes live and um, occasionally other art related uh, tweets as well but nothing about what I'm eating or where I'm going or anything like that so fairly safe. On the other hand if you just want to try and catch me on my next stream which will be tomorrow night um, I stream at the moment around about well usually seven nights a week all from around about the same time 8 p.m in the UK 1900 hours GMT or roughly in your own time zone two hours ten minutes ago was eight o'clock my time so that's the time I will be starting tomorrow on other evenings hope I'll see you then I think what I'll do at the moment now is uh, I'll probably host 3D Bloke. So if you're not familiar with 3D Bloke, he's um, an airbrush and um, paintbrush artist. I'm not sure what he's doing tonight. Uh, or he may even be doing some paper craft. I think he was going to do some of that one night. Actually, I think he's doing Rat Pack, which is uh, a paintbrush artwork tonight. I think he wants to get it finished. So I shall host him in a minute. If you don't uh, already um, know a 3D bloke, I recommend you check him out and uh, see, see some wonderful art. Thank you all. See you again, hopefully tomorrow. Bye-bye.